leave. You know, middle of Waterloo, they've got yes. that new hotel. Yes. Before that new hotel was built, it was an abandoned building. In New Year's Eve in the year 2000, they had a squat rave in there um, on all stories, and it lasted, I think, a week. Wow. Yeah. Right, so we went there on the first day, and there was this person passed out, we presumed, in a K-hole. Uh, I think one of my mates like ended up sort of like, I don't know, just trying to skin up a hash zoo on her or something. Uh, and we just cracked on and, you know, just carried on, done our mm -hmm. thing and fucking, you know, when everything else wore off, we yeah. just went home and went to bed. Turns out that lady or the person was actually dead. She died, she OD'd on the first day. What? Yeah. So it was like, like you know, it was, it was that kind of environment and she didn't get noticed until... All the ravers left, all the sound systems left. The people came in to fucking, like, you know, re sort of rehabilitate the building. You know, it's still there, isn't it? Oh my god! So I say it's a lawless society, but you know yeah. the rules were followed, and you were you were kept safe by adhering to the the, the hierarchical structure yeah. of like you know you had the people at the top of the fucking spectrum that you did not cross. The killer killer podcast. The killer killer official <laughs> Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be, choose to be, wanna be. You, 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 you don't want to be anywhere else. Trust me, baby boy. It's not worth your time, effort, and health. If you've got a bad health plan, you're going to need to be sticking here, no doubt. Big shout out to everybody, sharers and carers, people who have been joining us and helping us out on the jump and spreading the word of street culture and beyond. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. We got a gentleman in the place, Wandsworth in the house. That's to be southwestern, those of you that don't know from out of town. Um, we're going to go through a deep dive into this gentleman's world of graffiti from the earlier days of the 90s and noughties, running back and beyond, and through different, different mini lives upon mini lives to the current state of play right now, which uh, well, you're about to see some of the most amazing art uh, and more. We have mods inside the place. How are we, my brother? I am um, honoured, <laughs> honoured to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm just genuinely, you know, sort of like taken aback. You're soaking it up. Yeah, You're soaking it up. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just taking it all in, man. Taking it all in. To, to a lot of people that are uh, 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 new uh, regulars to the show, you'll uh, you'll notice we have a stack of gold rather than my contemporary board that you normally see in the background. Um, I'm just blown away, brother. To be quite honest with you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's the the, the content and um, the 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 drawing style is a lot of a lot of it sort of like started with like graffiti influences, but it's sort of progressed to a uh, place in which it's become more reflective, which I'll get into um, in, in 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 time over this uh, conversation. But it's um, I like to think it's uh, yeah, it's I, I like it. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> wicked. And you say, it's a, you know, I get retrospective. Because mm, mm. I draw from a place of um, of uh, understanding my own sort of place in the world and emotional standpoint and um, my ability to uh, kind of understand where I am mm -hmm. at this time in my life. And um, and it's 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 uh, it looks like it's painful to some people to look at um, mm. but it's also the vibrancy of the colors are also reflective upon the variation in which i um uh, have chosen to sort of like you know exist within the world so it's um it's uh yeah it's the one yeah it's all it's all very, they're all very different but they're all very unique and they're all very similar in the same sense now i'm no therapist um, here but when i'm looking at when i'm looking at what we got here by example and these are all new mm. um there's a sense of controlled chaos in a way. There's there's a lot of depth, obviously from the um, inside with the, the tagging and the writing. Then that's bringing to the forefront with the colours, um, very radiant ones. And then you've got these pockets, and then you've got this mad character that 
yeah, blood coming out of his eyes. Yeah, it's just holy like, per holy per madness. That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's um, there's a, there's an element of pain to that, which is all internalized. Really? And for me to um, be able to deal with the uh, the, the 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 sort of like uh, conflicting emotions upon which I draw from, I need to put it onto paper as a means of understanding it. And once I see it, I can sort of like compute. It almost comes out comes out of here, goes into there. And I understand it further, further more so than I would have done if I hadn't have engaged in that process. So they've all got a backstory of. Um, of, of trauma or realization around certain issues which really I've had throughout my life and okay so it's a break so if if you're because each one of these and we'll get into the rest of them in a minute but you know if you're looking at each one of these as a volume in a certain a, no a certain chapter in mm -hmm. your life yeah so how how high does the world need to feel before you're like okay I'm gonna have to do one oh yeah I have to for my own sanity, it's a necessity that I have to engage in a creative process on a daily basis to, um, to I uh, know, sort of gain a partial tranquility within my own head. Really? Uh, yeah, a million percent, a million percent. Otherwise, uh, I'm in trouble. I'm bang in trouble. If I've I've noticed it in the past. Really? Especially, I'll I'll get into this in more detail as we progress. But especially um, coming out of um, treatment, I've noticed that if my um, if my creative wings are clipped mm -hmm. um, and it's a dangerous place for which I put myself because I'm either busy mm. or I can't be asked or, you know, something comes up which stops me, either whether I'm conscious of it or not, I mm. notice it in my demeanour, wow. in my interaction with the world. I get snappy, I get narky, I get anxiety, I get depressed, I get, like, all the rest of it. So it's like, it's, it's almost like a drive. It's, it's, it's part of my soul. It's, mm. I, I, it's like breathing, yeah. you know what I mean? But to a lesser sort of more drawn out extent. Do you, I mean, this does segue into various conversations we had on the podcast with mm. graffiti writers, especially. There's some music guys out there as well, to be fair. But they need to do graph. And a lot of it is for one of a handful of those reasons. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, the, the therapeutic um, value in creating a piece of um uh I know original and um uh sort of I don't know piece of work for want of a better expression that's original and unique to you is a is a process because it's like regurgitation you throw up almost mm. an, a, an element of emotion especially with the canvases that I do mm. uh, it's like a you know it's like a mm -hmm. and, and then and then it feels better Mm. You know, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's, it's highly beneficial, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm thinking as well. You know, a lot of the most prolific graffiti artists, writers, they they do suffer a level of burden to certain things, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I can only I can only speak for my own for myself. I can't mm. I can't really comment on the experiences of other people, but I know the ones that I do know. Um, that have gone through similar situations mm. to myself, mm. they do have a process which they engage in, whether it's music or or art or, yeah. or, or you know, something which allows them to release that pressure. Yeah. It's like a pressure cake. Mm. And um, when you engage in writing, I don't know whether it's spoken word, creative outlets such as drawing yeah. or, or, or anything creatively, it's like releasing of that pressure cake and it slowly mm. dissipates to a gentle simmer. Whereas, like I was saying just then, yeah. if I don't do that, that pressure builds and builds wow. and builds. And when that pressure does build, I've known from past experience that the only person at risk is myself. Really? Yeah, like I don't, I don't, you know, my, my, um, my uh, my rage is all internalized. Wow! It's all like yeah. It's all very um, it's all very uh, self deprecating. Wow! Um, Sounds like lyrics from a Slipknot song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but without you know, we we, we must get into more. <laughs> definitely, let's definitely. See what, let's see what else this, these explosions have concocted. Wow! Sick. I mean, this is a treat, man. Thank you. I yeah. love it when people bring bits in. It's fucking great. I feel like Tony Hart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but for real, like... Yeah, it's obviously not Rolf Harris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our under-23s at the moment, have yeah, not like, got a clue what we're talking that. about. Um, bro, this is sick as well. 
it's just another self-reflective piece similar to the last one. It was done in a series of ways which allowed me to just sort of like draw. Wow. And draw. And draw. Yeah, yeah, because it so does look super layered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, like it, I would always start, I, when I start a process of this depth, I always... Will, crazy. Yeah, I will, I will never know where it's going to end up, but I know when it's finished. And I always enjoy getting to the end point, but when I start it, I have no idea. You feel it park up when it's... Yeah, yeah, I know. There's a resolution there, like, when I finish it, and I'm just like... Phew. Done, wow. done. That's that's. If I add any more to that, it's just going to look chaos. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. it's going to look like it's uh, not supposed to be there. So I know when to leave it alone, which is a skill in itself. For sure. Because I like I don't know I've, I've been at a wall many a time and I've just put paint on top of paint on top of paint on top of paint. And I just thought that looks shit. So there's a, there's a definite um, there's a lot to be said for knowing when enough's enough. Mm. Um, and I'm I'm le- I'm still learning to do that, to be honest. Like I love the way that you've got these drips coming down, and you never know where the neck kind of. St- but that's that's again part of the um, abstract. It almost looks in some cases it looks like you haven't let the pen go. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, especially around the sort of like the the dome of his head yeah. and um, sort of like the interweaving of the features and yeah. that. Where um, yeah, sort of like suggestions become actual form, and then form becomes sort of like solid objects. Yeah. Just through repetition. Do you um? I paint in the dark sometimes. Do you? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> like that one. This one I painted all of that. Yeah, but you're you're graphite. Da- yeah, yeah, no, do, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. But like canvas wise, yeah, like, I, I do it with the lights down, and then I turn the lights on and see what I've come up with. That's sick. It's just like I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, but like fuck it, like you know. That's let's how see you where mess with canvases. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. These guys, these people that you've got going on here, they're, they're pretty, yeah, they're pretty um, full on, aren't they? Yeah, I are mean... These, are these people that, you know, because we all need a target, are these people in your head that... They're all me. They're all just sad versions of myself going through different um, explorative, uh, um, you know, degrees and alleyways in my uh, conscious. I fucking love it. Right, there's uh, the next one. I've got, we've, we've got some... This is my favourite one. Yeah, what I mean... Ass? That's, um, it looks, uh, yeah, that for me, from a, um, I don't know, uh, just like a justification process Mm. is literally the least meaningful out of all four that I've wrought. Um, It's for me, that's Liam Gallagher having a bad day in the world of Judge Dredd. That's what I see. <laughs> yeah, I see the Gallagher swagger now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, you've got the glasses and he's just, well, I just painted that and I just thought, you know what? I took, days. took a bit of Ozzy Osbourne, oh. threw in some fucking, you know, some halos, yeah. drew on some of my graffiti bubbling and, you know, and then just came up with that. And then you've got the skyline, you've got everything popping up. Yeah. Like, oh, that is, I love how you... See, who needs conversation when you got these? You know what I mean? This is the mind of the man himself. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely wicked. Just an insight into the uh, into the consciousness. Well, to be fair, it's a good place to start. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, yeah, definitely. Oh, there we go. There's the last one here, which uh, I scaled the camera to fit. You see? Yeah, splendid. It's absolutely wicked, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've... Uh, it's a got a Bowie friend. vibe to it. Yeah, a good friend of mine said it looked like a Chinese Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. He's right. I'll know? take it. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, I love that. Do you know what I mean? Like, a, well, like the other ones, I started this process, and I would, I'll sh- you'll be shocked to see what it was at the beginning, really, to where it's ended up now. Really, I'll show you that after. But um, nice. yeah, but this is what kind of it ended up as. And for me, this is I don't know. I've got like the it, that top bit almost reminds me of like a fair uh, like a fairground at a seaside resort yeah not resort but like say resort you think of florida right yeah. i'm thinking of like you know uh, like western supermare mm. do you know what i mean like that kind of sort of english seaside town where they serve fish and chips and seagulls and yeah fucking... dismal kind of yeah, vibes yeah 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 where it's wet yeah Blackpool, um, big up blackpool by the way <laughs> yes i love you <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was just, uh, that's just another version of myself looking back at to where I'd, where I've been and where I've come from and where I'd, um, potentially like to be. Well, that's a good point to, to footnote into, uh, where, where did it all begin, brother? Where did it all start? Um, for me, it was the late nineties. Um, and I can't, uh, sort of, you know, communicate to you the nature of my involvement with graffiti without touching on um, 
uh, sort of squat party, free party. Mm. We were uh, we were parishioners at <laughs> the um, the scene of illegal drum and bass, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, rude awakening, Ooh. rude awakening. DJ Chillum, MC Herbsy, MC X Man, they were the holy trinity. Wow! And if they showed up at a party, we knew it was going to be a big one, and we knew it was going to be popping. And mm. anybody else that showed up, we weren't bothered about. The rest is the mediocre. rest. They were they were all second place, mate. Right. It was they were the creme de la creme. Like I mean, yeah, the squat raves, like Spat will tell you, um, like they were like an experience upon which I could have stayed for the rest of my life because I just, you know, I went to these raves and I thought, right, that's me. I mean, this is, this is what, this is what I've been, you know, you get that soul searching thing when you're a teenager, like, where do I belong? Yeah, where's it all fit? Where's like, what, yeah. what, I mean, you know, and I dropped my first pill and went to these raves and I was just like, right, um, this is like, it was unreal. Like the, it was a lawless environment mm. upon which you could just let loose. Mm. And that's not to say there weren't any rules because there were, but, if you obeyed the unspoken rules, then man, you you prospered. We thrived in those environments. Oh, like yeah. it was, it was like my first drum and bass rave was um, uh, Elephant and Castle in the cinema, and it was just like I think that went on for four days, bro. Like it was nuts, absolutely nuts. It sounds so romantic and sepia. Oh, you it was, it. it was. I mean, yeah. I mean, on the offset, when you all. You've got the body of a 19-year-old and you can easily do seven pills a night and then just like, you know, sort of take the come down off with a gram of ketamine and then just smoke weed until Wednesday and then crash <laughs> Thursday, Friday and then go back out again on Sunday. Jeez. Great. Yeah, yeah, your do stamina that. is on. Oh, mate, yeah. Like, it was, we were relentless in our, like, um, in our consumerism of illegal and mind-altering substances. It, if we were, we Algorithms were, are going crazy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we were non-discriminate in our, in our, in our, in our drug taking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't give a monkeys. Uh, but you know, eventually that kind of that had its toll. That that really that really had its toll. Um, in regards to graffiti, like obviously the DDS boys back in the day were just and still are. Like you know, they were like they were at the pinnacle of the hierarchical structure in mm. London Graph and mm. beyond. Mm. You know, I'd never forget the time when I saw the. Um, there's a fume piece, the 30-foot fume piece yeah. in uh, between Westbourne Park and Royal Oak. Bonkers. Like, I just thought, right. How does one how man even do, yeah. fuck did he do that? Like, <laughs> Still you know, the biggest question that pens like, yeah, over people's heads. I, I was shocked by the fact that his um, anonymity remained intact, but his notoriety sped up so far. Yeah. Not just by that, do you know what I mean? He was He was everywhere. Super prolific. And it was just like, I want a piece of that. How do I get involved in what's yeah. going on with this? Yeah. Like, it was I... like, I emulated these, yeah. like, gods among men. They were just like, like, pies. Mm. You know, they oh, were... Big they, pies, yeah, come on. They were, they were, back in the day, they were the, they were the people that I was just like, wow. Yeah. Like, how do you do what you do? <laughs> and big up Fume as well. You yeah. know, these guys are, you know, practitioners even to this day. Craftsmen. Of, yeah. They are seriously skilled individuals. Yeah. Devious, yeah, <laughs> which makes in the best it, possible way, guys. Like. Which makes it even more fun. <laughs> oh, a million percent. To, you know, yeah. to see what happens next. Yeah, yeah, for in, sure. Yeah, know. yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. So this... the yeah that engagement with that like you know lawlessness society of the squat rave coupled with a willingness and a want to progress in a um, in a, in, a, in an art form which was considered to be non accepted by society mm. as a teenage young man in London was just like, yeah, this is this is my niche. Mm -hmm. This is where I mm -hmm. want to get. This is where I've you know, I've been waiting for this all my life. So yeah. it's like somebody tapped me on the shoulder and went, <laughs> You're in. Because like, it's got the art thing, but then it's got the you know, the anti social, anti establishment. It's yeah, got all of those things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. for someone that ain't into graph, they just see it for what it is. In fact, a lot of them don't even notice yeah. it. That's the bonkers thing yeah, about it's it. Crazy. Like, it's talk crazy. Talk to anyone about it, and sometimes yeah, they'll yeah. be like, "What was the tag there?" Yeah, I mean, uh, even Mad. like, I mean, uh, somebody uh, said something to me about like only 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 graffiti artists can really truly appreciate graffiti, and you know, you can be into your graffiti, but nobody unless you know the context of how it of the painstakingly time that you need to put in to evolve your letters to look like they do in the way that they do to make it stand out. Then you, all you're, you're just on the sidelines. And, you, like, listen, I have no doubt about that. Particularly when 
going out on track sides. Yeah, we did. doing that shit in the dark. Yeah. Right? That as <laughs> Whilst well. getting chased by trackies. Yeah. Like, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And that's the kind of thing that I thrived off as a, you know, as a, as a sort of mid-twenties in London. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that coupled with the squat raves, um, you know, it was a good honeymoon period for a mm. couple of years. Mm. Um, what mischief did you get up to, Mods? What happened? Anything, any fun uh, morsels of, of stories that, that went on? Yeah. Um, there was, okay, New Year's Eve. Um, I wouldn't know whether this is fun or not, but it's worth mentioning. Mm. It's, I suppose it's fun. Fun is, a, fun is down to your perception <laughs> of what you find amusing and all yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, popcorn out, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, yeah, New Year's Eve. You know, middle of Waterloo, they've got yes. that new hotel. Yes. Before that new hotel was built, it was an abandoned building. In New Year's Eve in the year 2000, they had a squat rave in there um, on all stories, and it lasted, I think, a week. Wow. Yeah. Right, so we went there on the first day, and there was this person passed out, we presumed, in a K-hole. Uh, I think one of my mates like, ended up sort of like, I don't know, just trying to skin up a hash zoo on her or something. Uh, and we just cracked on and, you know, just carried on, done our mm -hmm. thing, and fucking, you know, when everything else wore off, we mm -hmm. just went home and went to bed. Turns out... That lady, or the person, was actually dead. She died, she OD'd on the first day. What? Yeah. So it was like, like you know, it was it was that kind of environment. And she didn't get noticed until ever, all the ravers left, all the sound systems left, the people came in to fucking, you know, re, sort of rehabilitate the building. You know? It's still there, isn't it? Oh, my God. God. So I say it's a lawless society, but you know yeah. the rules were followed, and you were you were kept safe by adhering to the the, the hierarchical structure yeah. of like you know you had the people at the top of the fucking spectrum that you did not cross, mm. and if you did, you knew about it. Really, and there was nothing nobody could do. Um, so it was uh, it was, but that element of fear kept everybody safe because only people who knew what they were doing would ever contradict certain elements really? of the free party code. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was insane. Insane. Man, that is crazy because you've also got Mother Nature there. You know, oh yeah. If it's a girl's time to go, it's a, jeez. Yeah, it was like we put ourselves in ridiculously dangerous situations going to these things. Me and my mate Oko went to a free party. Um, you know, Clapham Junction. Yeah. Bingo Hall in Clapham Junction. Yes, I do. Yeah. They turned it into a nice posh block, that, block of facts. Yes, right. Right, but you can get up on the roof and oversee the junction station, and me and my mate Loco went back there the day after the squat party, broke in, found our way onto the roof, got jumped by six crackheads with metal uh, metal poles, hospitalised me, and uh, my mate Loco fucking jumped us, bang, 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was like, but in hindsight, what were we doing going back to an abandoned building where there was a rave? It was stupid. Like, you know what I mean? But I mean... At that, we were just there just to fucking get the reach. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? You could see that reach from Clapham, the, the yeah, platforms yeah, yeah. on Clapham Junction. You we were like, yeah, we're going back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Typical graph writer. Yeah, there, yeah. it's like, I don't give a fuck, we're going back. Let's, do it. Let's get that reach before somebody goes there and does it. Like, you know. But on the real though, I've never, because, you know, we get into squat party vibes, people talking about them. Um, affectionately over the years of a certain age range of, yeah. of writer. But, this is really an in-depth kind of, you know, mm. like you were, you were most definitely invested. Oh, yeah, a million percent. And we lived for it for five, six years. Absolutely, that's all we did. So what's the kickback from that? The kickback. Okay, so as time progressed and we thought we were still living the lives of a sort of, you know, an un, unadulterated kind of uh, young, you know, men growing up in London, um, the crux did start to appear. Uh, people started going away. Um, there was a high level of criminality involved. Some people obviously got sent to prison. Others um, others died through misadventure. Really? Others committed suicide. My mate really? through is a good example where um, he was like the cre he was like a creative force of nature, hmm. but coupled with his creativity was also a real sense of innocence and um, fragility mm. about him. And if you throw someone like that into the mix with people yeah. who, if they sniff out weakness, will use it to their, adva to use it to their advantage. Really? Then it's going to be, it's going to end in tears. And um, I think we were too young at the time to really sort of 
appreciate what could potentially happen until it did. Mm. And I know the coroner, I think, I believe, um, uh, gave us a, uh, uh, like a verdict of misadventure. But, dude, we all knew it was suicide, man. Like, he, I'd visited him when he got sectioned. Um, and if you weren't already mentally unstable when you went into the place, you definitely were after spending a week yeah, yeah. in there because you were surrounded by absolute lunatics. And it was like... It was like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, but without the humour. It was really? fucking horrible. Um, and, yeah, so he, you know, he, 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 yeah, it, 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 it just, it didn't end well for him as other people that I could go into ended up, you know, going away for a very, very long time and some of them never came back. Really? So I think that exposure to the real rawness of the danger of the situation which we were facing at the time kind of echoed somewhat within me and I thought I'll take a step back. Make it's, it make it stop. Uh, yeah, it's not a good it's not a career progression to want to go to jail. Well people you know I mean? how old were like, you guys at that time? What? Started off at nineteen maybe, finished off maybe twenty three, so twenty four. We're still young. Yeah man, you're still developing, you're still figuring out who you are. You're still and then you know, add all that sense of um, emotional and uh, growth to be had, distort mm. that with um, not even alcohol, hard class A drugs I'm yeah. talking about. Um, yeah, that's going to that's gonna resonate and still does for me to this day on my own mental health. Um, and it's only through a large process of um, self-analysis and development have I been able to curtail that. Mm. Um, to a point where I'm now in control. Yeah, because it controls you up until a point. It does. It? If you, I mean, it's scary when things like psychosis happen, paranoia. Mm. Um, but they're a byproduct of not taking care of yourself, of not being true to who you are. Mm. And and if you can understand that process, there's a way of controlling it to a point where you can use it to your advantage. But if you are 22, your mates just committed suicide. Yeah, no, no, different. You're paranoid to fuck. Yeah. And you want to just fucking everything to stop. All you're going to do is hit it twice yeah, as hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what a lot of us did. And you did it. Oh, yeah, a million percent. Until, until, until through kind of, I don't know, I'm, I don't want to use that analogy, which I just thought of, but I mean, until he, until, uh, yeah, when he, when he went through what he did, that kind of made me, forced me to take a step back and reevaluate what I was doing. Really? Um, and then moving forward, although the graffiti element of my life was still ever present, mm, mm, so mm. I'd stop going. Th I'd stop going free party, but I'd still like. I'd still, you know, run around. Kind run of around. hand in hand. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was fun. Mm. It was fun. Mm. Like, it was just like it was. Yeah, and it was like um, it was almost like we were holding on to the last bastion of our youth when we were getting into the twenty four twenty five period, mm. where we thought, you know, yeah, okay, we might not go raving all day, all night, every day for like mm. six days straight, but we could still fucking jump on. This is the sense of freedom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can get exactly. away with it because you're age, but then that, it does become the lip. Yeah, that suddenly uh, a million you... percent, <laughs> a million percent. The risks I've taken for to get a reach with, especially my mate Loco, have been like looking back on it now would have been. Um, <laughs> No fucking way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fear. Fear, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were fearless. Um, and it's not like we didn't think about it because we knew the danger. We mm. just didn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so, yeah, it was, um, yeah, so I decided to sort of like be an observer of graffiti in regards to a partaker mm. as opposed to. Um, for, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, after that process, and I engaged, um, I started cooking, became a chef. Huh. Um, wow! And I was quite quite successful at it, to be honest. Wow. I, was, I was I was I was good at what I did, but I thought to myself, I'm you know I'm getting you know respected job like you know mm. some career progression. I get paid a decent wage. Oh, but also alcohol and cocaine comes in with it hand in hand, mate. They're not only condoned, they're encouraged. Yeah, just so you can get by and get it done, dude. Um, and then have a Big Mac at the end of the night, and you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You eat like shit. You work like shit. No work life balance. You're. I worked in a restaurant um, over in Farringdon by uh, run by a guy who you probably would know. Okay. And um, I lived on the Caledonian Road at the time. 
And obviously, the Cali Road is like, mm. the, it's like, mate, you could fucking, by the time you finish calling for a ticket, the fella's already <laughs> at your door. Do you know what I mean? It's quick. You don't even have a chance to change your mind. It's just like, yeah, I'm here, Bosh. Like, yeah. wicked. Anyway, so I, ho- I, I hooked up my head chef with my local pharmacist. And um, I met my, I wouldn't meet him as often as he did. But I mean, it transpires that I had a conversation with my head, with the pharmacist. And I was like, yeah, how many, like, what's, what's he, what's he on, doing? Yeah. He's, Getting between seven to fifteen grams a week. What? A week delivered to the restaurants. So in turn, I got my tickle for free. Really? Because yeah, because I hooked you, up the yeah. connect. Um, so yeah, that's just that kind of. And it's like okay, so I talk about the finding where I belonged in regards to the squat party and the mm. squat rave scene mm. and that culinary professionally. When I discovered that I could work in an industry. You know, I could run with these, you know, pack of scoundrels and pirates, but they were also considered upstanding members of society. Yeah. And wow. party like an animal. Yeah. And still and retain a job. And their perception yeah. is like, you know, when crowning when, glory of, you know. When that clicked in my head, I was like, wicked, I found myself again. Yeah. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Let's just, let's just stick with this for a second. So you found a more... Socially acceptable so, version like, of a like, free party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, that couldn't have helped you. In no, way. it <laughs> fucked me, bro. It absolutely annihilated me, mate. And like I said, going back to the analogy of us being a young man in my 20s and my early 30s, yeah, I could pull that off. You know, and started hitting 32, 33, mate. The cracks started to appear once again. I ended up, you know, getting sacked, not giving a shit about what I did or being in an environment where I didn't have the um, uh, emotional intelligence to realise that I didn't want to be there, so I just chose to allow the person to sack me through his performance. So I was just like, I don't give a monkey's, but I don't have the balls to leave, so I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just not going to... Yeah, I'm just going to act... I'm just not going to fucking work right, and then I'm going to force your hand. That way it takes the responsibility off of me. It wasn't my fault. I still showed up. It doesn't matter if I was half cut. You sacked me, so I didn't fucking lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Do you know what I mean? That was where where the mentality... And on the resume, it isn't so tarnished with some of the more, you know... Yeah, I mean, it is. And in the context of the larger scale of things, it doesn't really matter. No. Um... So, yeah, going from that culinary environment where I would sort of like, you know, drift in and out on a semi-conscious level at the best of times, um, but, you know, alcohol and cocaine still pre- played like a very prevalent role within my life mm. to a point where I um, I just needed, I needed to get help. I needed to get away. I needed, I needed to do some serious work on myself in order to keep myself alive. Mm. It was it was it was that choice. Really? Either you do what you need to do in a setting where you can't leave. Mm. I, I wouldn't be alive today if I didn't do what I did. Guaranteed. I mean, people what, who what, know what, me what, well. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes there is that. What's the word? Um, a um, oh, I forget the word of it when people come together and tr- force your hand into uh, doing something. You know the word, right? I know the word. Yeah. For fuck's um, sake. Um, 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 it happened in a surprise. Comment below. Co- comment below. Oh, in a... God. Yeah. Um... But the point is, is that you made the decision yourself. Yeah, it was, well, ugh, the decision making process, you know, people, some people I've been around in the recovery sort of element of my life have talked of an epiphical moment where one day they woke up and they just said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. For me, it was gradual. It was like the continuous erosion of my soul on a daily basis and your your guardian angel was just saying to you, "Fucking, fucking sort your life out." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that was like the 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 stories I could tell you in addiction are twice, ten times as bad as that squat party story. Really? Yeah, a million percent. I've known friends and myself experienced true on the level trauma due to the deviousness of a substance which they choose to put in their system and they want and need and drive to get it without giving a fuck about anybody, their closest, nearest and dearest. Mm. So I had to get away. I had to get away. And like I pointed to that picture and said, it's like Western Superman. That's where I ended up. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, they tried to put me into a place in Streatham and I just thought, you know what? Mm. One bad day, I'm just going to hop that wall. I'll be straight down to Weatherspoons. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no chance I'm going to like, yeah. just get it's me out of London. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I yes. get you. <gasps> 
I had to, I had to. So I went into an inpatient detox, rehab, sorry, an inpatient rehab um, two years ago. Well, a bit longer than two years because I've been out for a while. Anyway, um, and I had to really strip myself back to my, what I thought was the essence of my being. So I identified as mm. I can cook, I'm a chef, you know, I, mm. I like art, I, I do graffiti, I like... Um, you know, I like music. I like uh, interacting with people on a social level. Mm. And these all, all these preconceptions that I had, I had to question because ultimately I was working on the crutch of alcohol and cocaine as being as an identity. And yes. I had to question who I truly was. So the vice within all of those things yes. you enjoy doing. Yeah. It, it's, it becomes a, th a thread. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it just, and that thread resonated throughout my whole existence where, you know, at the age of 39, people would ask you, oh, yeah, do you, uh, what do you like? And I couldn't answer because I didn't know who I was. And I'm not talking something yeah. exotic like, no. do you like a lighty puree? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, yeah, do you, do you, and it's like, do you like fucking cos mm -hmm. And I got to a point in rehab where I could, so I was so disassociated with who I had become, I didn't know the answer to that question. And they, you, they, they, what I had to do, I can only speak for myself in regards to this, but what I had to do is strip myself back down to fucking my pure essence of being and then rebuild myself through continuous work, introspective, introspective work. Define um, pure essence of you at that point. What, what is it? What is Because okay. that, that's quite I, um, broad. What, what, yeah. What? All right. So I was in a, um, I was in a, set, a, a setting um, in a group and a um, uh, very simple question was uh, asked of who are you and what do you need so wow. who are you and what do you need are you asking me i'm asking you some money would be good i'm yeah, yeah she's a really good you? yeah yeah it's true and what do you need not what do you want there's a difference oh. what do you need what ticks keller you know what i need um, and just this is going back to the guardian angel thing. Yep, it's it's the removal of mm. all the f clutter and bullshit. Yeah, okay. So I can find, so I can hear. Yep, what the truest direction is, my truest path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you then then that that re any resistance will get out of the way. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. See, that shows great self awareness. Yeah, I've learned through analysis of my own sort of being um i'm an, i i am an introvert mm. and i need stimulus so in regards to my introversy i compute and react in a way where i get presented with information i digest it i divulge mm. it i understand it and then i regurgitate my response in a mm. manner which is true to myself mm. as long as i do that and my response is genuine and it comes from a place of honesty mm. and consistency and humility and kindness towards myself. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with the response. In regards to the stimulus, in my daily life, I need to be engaged mentally with the process. Mm. Otherwise, I won't, I won't do it. I'm too old for bullshit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Don't I do waste know my time. exactly what you mean. So, stimulus and introversy. Sum me up. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. Of, that's, that must have taken a while to process. Yep. Because you're also having to de-skin yes. everything that you felt, you, you either felt you stood for or yep. your, where your moral compass lied. Yeah, and also the added trauma of people dying yeah. and going back to my relationship with my parents and my siblings because I'm the only one. I'm a, I've got two brothers and a sister and I'm the only one who ended up in this situation. So my perception of me growing up must have been, I thought, uh, distorted because none of them, I mean, they're all, you know, they're weekend defenders, mate. They can fucking go out and have a, do what they need to yeah, do. Yeah, but you had to grow up quickly. Still... Yeah, I did. I put myself in that position. I yeah. did. So, I mean, I'm just providing you with, I suppose I'm not providing you with reasons, but I'm pri providing you with examples of how I've ended up the way I have. Mm. And I'm also providing you with a way in which I've dealt with the, you know, the situation that I've put myself in and managed to make a negative into a positive. Yeah. Like... I was just about to ask, actually, you know, it's, why would you... 
why would you want that to change? Obviously, you know, the trauma, bereavements, you know, near death and other can always be, you know, you want that limited. But... It's outside of your control. That's right. And if you're able so to the, make a positive out of something, why it. would you change the past? You yeah. kind of... Yeah, could, well, you can't. No. It's, so it's not... That's a waste of time even thinking about. Yeah, yeah. I wish things didn't happen yeah, the way they did. People do, but, though. Yeah, I know, I know. And it's, it's uh, for me, I, I, I don't know, I, not to belittle anybody's uh, process in how they deal with what's happened to them, but for me, it's that's a waste of fucking time. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. change what's happened. I can analyse it to a point where I can understand it and help, which helps me deal with it yeah. in order for me to move on with my life in a productive manner. Mm. But I can't change it. Uh. That's just, you know, that's fanciful. And I've experienced too much reality yeah. to do that. But do you think people that do have that desire or wish that they could change it, that's their, them resisting... The, the fate of the way their cards are lying and actually fixing a problem? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I think... Would you... You know, you have to get rid of the past. No, you have to learn from it. Right, so doing that uh, opens up the portals of you being allowed to, to grow. Yeah, a million percent. Yeah. Understanding it. Understanding it yeah. in a retrospective manner, looking at it. And the only way I could do that was in the... F the, the relative safety of a uh, of a therapeutic setting because mm. all of that pain that I was looking at mm. would have pushed me over the edge yeah, unless yeah. I was being held mm. and um, and the skill set that I've learned within the setting that I went to has empowered me to ensure that I am as true to my own sense of self as possible yeah. which then keeps me safe yeah otherwise what, what otherwise was it I'm like fucked. what was it like leaving those you know those environment that that because mm. that must have been stabilizers off whoop here, here we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> back out into the real world yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it was necessary to leave it was um i i i thought it was too early but my my time was give my time was up three months before right they let me out so i got three months pro gratis wow yeah which was like saved Rare. my life yeah. saved my life really? without that at those extra three months i probably wouldn't well, they, they, they give you a window of time, but you only really break yeah. right at the end. Yes. And they need they want to give you that extra time, but then you've got to, you know, yeah. juggle things and try and make work. And a lot of times it's like, no, no, we've actually finally just covered some ground. Exactly. It takes that long. It does, it does. They, I mean, people always, I've been told, and I've also witnessed that um, people enter into a therapeutic state sorry, in a therapeutic setting, in a state of incongruence, which basically means they're not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, for a therapist to build up the rapport enough with someone for them to open up in order to tell the truth to themselves, like you said, takes mm. time. Long time. It does, especially if the fucking trauma or the issues they are dealing with are deep-seated, yeah. that, um, that whole sense of self-discovery is, like, blocked by the person's inability to be true. And once you break through that seal, it's like a floodgate. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, ping, 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 you're remembering stuff, you're doing things, oh, that's why that's happened, and that's why I act like this. Unlock, um, unlock, yeah. unlock, unlock. No, it's, like, it's, it's, like a, it's like a wave of clarity just washes over you, um, which happened, it happens, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's happened to me a couple of times, but not recently, because... I think I feel I feel that I've definitely sort of got to the bottom of my barrel, mm. um, and um, I'm ready to fill it back up again. So I've got to say, Mods, I'm super proud of you, man. This is by far one of the most intellectual and interesting and and heartfelt podcasts that I've yeah. done in a while, man. Oh, I mean, I was like, I don't know, I was, I, I want to, I don't want to come here and I want to come here and speak my truth. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I wouldn't be doing myself justice, mm. and I would be doing yourself a disdust, disdust injustice by, yeah. by not doing so. Mm. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I can give this stuff away freely <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy you're willing to accept it. Fuck yeah. What, what's your family think? Uh, yeah, they're proud. Nice. You know? Yeah. They're, 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 yeah, they've, um, yeah, they've expressed their, uh, their gratitude in regards to how I've eventually turned out. <laughs> it's a success story, man. Yeah, it's bro. an absolute success story. A million story. percent. A million percent. So, I mean, to bring it back to the context of graffiti, mm -hmm. 
I, when I got out of treatment, I went into, um, before I went into treatment, I engaged with the, the services in Clapham. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I got out of treatment, I re-engaged with the services in Clapham. Mm-hmm. And the services in Clapham put on like an event date for the service users. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know, the, all the recovering drug addicts and alcoholics in Wandsworth from Richmond were like bouncing around this open court in, um, in, in the middle of Clapham. And um, I heard there was going to be a bit of spray painting going on. So I was like, oh, all right, yeah, I'll yeah that's that. good me, isn't it? <laughs> oh, fucking right, mate. So I went in there and, um, you know, I immediately swatted this um, person who looked very out of place. <laughs> he looked very worried, you know. So I'm there sussing him out and he's there sussing me out. And the guy who sort of organised it came up and introduced. He's like, yeah, this is thingy. Like, all right, mm. mate, how's it going? And he was like, so, yeah, when was the last time you used a spray can? And I was like, oh, just before I went away, I'd done like a, a really sort of like, I was half cut and I'd done like a really ropey dub with spat down mm. in Wandsworth and um showed him a picture of it you know, he was like hold on that's crazy. the guy turns out to be DK <laughs> <laughs> how weird is that like big up DK you know what yeah, I mean bro I like it. it's like I was just like you've got to be kidding me that's like, amazing this happened for a reason yeah yeah, yeah. like you know so <laughs> Like, in the context of graffiti, it's like it almost came back full circle. Wow. And, like, was slap bang, the universe or whatever provided me with this I opportunity. I fucking love that. It's mental, isn't it? Yeah. So then I re-engaged with the world, as I was doing already, but purely on a creative level, I re-engaged with the graffiti element of my life that was long gone and past and almost dead, but I sort of reignited that flame and I reached out to certain people who I knew sort of like had my back through throughout the processes mm. that I've been through and one of them obviously was spat and um yeah and we just sort of like hit the ground running and um yeah it was it was it was great I've ran into and made sort of like connections within the graffiti world outside of the recovery world mm. because the recovery world is very limited to people who have only got a common ground in sobriety right and that's not real life. Yeah. I've got to engage with the world on the world's terms. And people yeah. like getting sniffed up and drinking yeah. beer. And that's the problem. And it's, uh, no, it's not my problem. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> and I'm all right with that. And if it makes me uncomfortable, I will leave. And I'm okay. And that's cool. But what the context of graffiti did for me in regards to my connection, it exposed me to form new or reform old connections in the world which didn't limit my exposure to human interaction with mm. people and all they talk about are, oh, oh yeah, I'm doing like, you know, what, what all this self-work and improvement and that. You know what? I want to just go out with the boys and have a crack. Yeah. And yeah. and it, have a bit of normality. To Raph prove does that as well. Yeah, it's to prove to really, myself that I wasn't uh, like, you know, a stunted individual. Yeah, you wanted to go back out and r- road test all of these theories and things that you'd learned. And, yeah, because yeah. it was theory at the end of the day. When yeah. you're in the bubble of rehab and they provide you with all this theory, until you road test it in the context of your own life, mm. it is just that. 100%. It's theory. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So putting the con- putting those teachings into the context of the real world, using graffiti as a training ground, as it mm. were, for my newly found freedom was just like, I, it was flourishing, man. That it is flourishing. fucking great, man. It was cool. It is cool, you know? And yeah, yeah, like, you know, and, and, and some people, I mean, like Debug for some reason keeps on popping up. Like yeah. I've ran into him. Do you know what I mean? And like like poets yonder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Donnie's all Donnie's. Yeah, mate. Plug Cope. <laughs> yeah. Um, Loco, who has supported me throughout this process. So good. Man. Um, yeah, just like you know, chips. Yeah. Like red rooms. Like all of them boys. They're just like South, 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 you know South. I mean? With a big Look, can in your mouth. Come it's on. just yeah, and it's and it's quite touching in the way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I went I went back into the process of graffiti, you know, like it was back in the 90s. Mm. Like my fucking swagger was on, <laughs> my ears were up, who's that? What do you write? What yeah. where's your paint cut? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm slowly coming to realise that, hold on a minute, these guys just want to paint and it's yeah. cool. Yeah. And yeah. it's cool. And I'm loving it. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's great. It's refreshing and it's motivating and it's purely like a creative sort of like, you know process which i'm enjoying getting yeah, back into yeah you know um and road testing all of that mm. and coming out the other side with and just going back to the canvases you know yeah it, it's a real <laughs> lane changer isn't it mate i find it so frustrating because i can execute i'm trying to it's like my creative canvassing 
is at a level which I'm, you know, trying to get my painting to. Mm. And because the skill set has not been practiced in many a year, it's like, you know, I'm re-engaging with the process. So it's yeah. almost like I'm having to start again. Finger ignitions. Yeah. And, you know, I need to remind myself when you get into a situation like that, you leave your ego at the door mm. and you learn from your peers mm. and you respect your elders. And that is the, that you know, that is the, the culture. Like, and you have to respect that culture because some of the kids today don't. Don't, And it's not cool. So, you know, like, that's been passed on to me from the people that I looked up to Mm. back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, and as long as that is, there's a code of ethics, a code of conduct. Code of conduct, yeah, that's right. That is, like, you know, not always adhered to, which is heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, those who know, know. Exactly. And, um, (laughs) yeah. No, it's all, it's, yeah, it's it's all positive shit, mate. Yeah, <laughs> And big up all the dons out there, you know, yeah, like the yeah. aforementioned and, and more. Yeah, a million percent, a million percent. So the future's bright then, brother. Well, look, I don't really know what the future holds, but you know what, I'm going to have fun getting there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, well, <laughs> let's keep on the straight and narrow and see what happens. See what happens, see? Yeah. See? So you get on a pe- you get a killer podcast, you see? Mods, thank you so much for joining us. Gentlemen, brother. That is, I, honestly, is one of my favourite podcasts we've done. And we've done loads. It was fantastic. I'm just, I'm just genuinely, um, genuinely touched to be here. Thank mm. you for having me. Absolute vibe. And big up Spat as well for the connect. You know what it is. Yeah, Spat, the tallest man in Graf. Yeah. And Loco, uh, the big nosed aristocrat. <laughs> Killer Gala podcast. That thing was out fast. You know what it do, where it is and how we're doing it every single week, two times. Not just one, not just twice, but you got double the value. Listen, sharing is caring, all right? Crime don't pay and neither do they. So get sharing. Um, yeah, <laughs> big up yourself. Stay lucky. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. That was fucking sick. Like that.